Hi everyone, welcome back to Garden. We're in early April now and today's an exciting day. It's the first 20 degrees of the year. Admittedly, that is coming with some quite strong winds and stormy weather. As you can see above me, the cherry blossom only just opened, is getting blown down around me like confetti. But down here, the gunnera are pushing out these magnificent big leaves. The mixture of spring sun, the mild nights, and all this rain we've been having, is just catapulting them up towards the sky. But today, I want to talk about another fast-growing tropical plant. One of my staple summer plants here in the garden, yes, it's cannas. I want to talk about when to divide them, how to divide them, and a few tips to get your set off this year started for the biggest summer growth possible. So, let's get going. So, as we're in the first week of April, as you can probably tell by that wind howling around me, the weather can be completely unpredictable. So for me, it's a little bit early to start planting out tender plants in the garden. I'll wait another month for that. But this year, with things being so mild, I might get tricked into starting them maybe late April. We'll see how it goes. But here, a lot of my cannas are still in the ground. I leave them in the ground every year. The Alton Steinii that I grew from seed three years ago, they've stayed in the ground, not a problem at all. Some of them are still below there, dormant, waiting for their bit of spring sun and their time to shine. Others are just starting to poke through now. But for a lot of my potted cannas, they're all in my polytunnel. Some of them, kind of musifolia, were planted up into pots three years ago. And as they've been potted up progressively, they're now in 130 litre pots. Some varieties like that are very vigorous. Others like the Alton Steinii, well, let me show you one that I dug up last autumn. And here it is. So this one is a relatively small clump because yes, believe me, some of these cannas get really big quickly. And as you can see now, it's a good sized plant. Whilst you don't have to divide cannas for a good few years, you can just let them get steadily bigger and do their thing. Once they get to a certain size, most of the energy and vigor forms at the edge of the clump. So it's well worth splitting them up and getting some more free plants to spread around the garden or share to other growers. So this one here, as you can see, with a bit of polytunnel heat, it's already started pushing out new growth. And for me now, as we're heading into April, this is the time to divide them. Some people then choose to actually split the cannas up in autumn. But for me personally, I tend to wait until spring. And that's for two critical reasons, which I probably mentioned back in autumn, but I'll repeat again now. The first of those is, simply put, plants are easier to overwinter in large clumps. As you can see here, this Alton Steinii, which has been in the ground three years, I dug it up late last autumn, put it in this tub, that's all I've done for it over winter. Simply kept it in here, in a polytunnel, which only has a heater when the temperature outside dips below or around freezing, somewhere around there. So it's not completely frost free. And then I just put a lump of fleece over the top of it, just a big ball of fleece, and that is all that I do. About a month ago, I gave them a little bit of a watering, but I don't water them too much because as soon as you start watering these plants, they start growing. So the water really is the control. So that is basically all I've done. So dug it up, put it in this pot, left it to it. If I'd split that plant up into lots of smaller pots, for a start, it'd be more work doing it. And secondly, you'd have those pots drying out a little bit quicker, so you'd have to water them more regularly. And I think probably the biggest single factor is just that if you split a plant up, it's then got cut rhizome edges, cut roots. You've got areas where the plant might potentially start to get rotten, different infections. That's not ideal. So if you keep it as a big lump like this and you split up in spring, now as we're starting to get some real spring sun, this is the time of year when plants are actually growing. You can see the green points poking up now. This is the time when they want to be split and they want to get growing into some magnificent plants. So for me, really lean into the seasons, look after them over winter, split them in spring, and then you'll get that growth so much faster without the worry of them rotting. So let me show you about how I divide this plant here. So let's get the gloves on. Not for any health and safety reasons, just so I don't get mud all over the camera again. <laughs> so this kind of here, I guess this method of division applies whether you've either dug your canners up now, you wanted to split them up in your garden if they've already started showing growth, whether like this one here, you dug them up at the end of last year and you wanted to propagate them further, or if you've got a canner in your polyton or greenhouse in a pot and it's started to fill that pot now and you want some more vigor and new plants this year, April is a great time to do it. And as you can see there, the signs of life are showing, and these are really helpful because those give us a clue of where we can split this plant. Now, in the past, I used to split and propagate plants as much as I possibly could. So if I had a large clump of cannas, say the ones I've got in the 130 litre pots, I would literally have split those into maybe 10, 12, 15 plants. These days, I don't go quite as far as that because what I find is, although the ambition is certainly admirable, you're never gonna want 15 small plants in your garden. And in some ways, having three or four really decent sized ones is the way forward. You're not sacrificing this year's display for future growth. But with this one here, personally, I see 
I could split this section off here, that section there, and this bit here looks like some old tubers, which I'll pot up separately and see if there's any life and vigor in them. So splitting them up, it couldn't be any simpler. I say that now, I've jinxed myself, haven't I? Essentially what you do, we'll take it out and put it on the ground. Now, you can use a spade, a knife, anything like that if you want, but personally, I like to just use my hands, and what I guess you really need to look for is the natural lines where you want to split the plant. So for here, I've got two growing points. I'm just actually gonna split it like that. And as you can see, that bit there came away incredibly easily. And that there is a new can of division, which is probably bigger than most shop bought canners you'll see in supermarkets and uh, bag and stores at this time of year. That is absolutely ready to grow. You see the healthy rhizome here. That's last year's old stem. That'll just wither away or you can chop it off. And there's plenty of roots and rhizome attached to the base of it. So that is a nice healthy can of division, which is raining soil down all over me. And that'll set off nicely. And then for the rest of it, we'll possibly split it up there. So this one here, I can see one growing point at the top there, just very small poking through. And at the base, you'll see I split that rhizome there. So this is partly why I don't do it in late autumn, because otherwise that section there would have to sit in cold, wet soil for pretty much four, five, maybe even six months before it starts growing. Whereas if I do it now in April, that'll heal up quickly, new roots will grow away, not a problem at all. So then by now, you've hopefully been brave, ripped that canner apart, and you've got two, three, four, maybe even more chunks like this here. As you can see, it's got a nice visible growing point, or two on this section here. A lump like this will grow into a nice plant for your garden this summer. It won't take years to size up, canners are very quick growing. And this is partly why I don't split them down too much, because I want some good plants for this summer. I don't want to wait a couple of years for them to size up again. So what's the next step of getting this plant ready for some beautiful growth this summer? It's potting them up. Now, when it comes to pots, this isn't a huge clump here. It's relatively good size. So I think something around a five litre pot or so will be about right for this one here. And this is why, as a gardener, it's always worth keeping the old pots, especially ones around this size because you never know when it comes to this time of year, which size you'll need. It's well worth having a supply of them, not just for the sake of the environment, but to make your life easier as well. Because this pot will only be needed for probably a month or so, by which point this can will be big enough to either pot on, if you want to keep it in a potted container for summer, or go out into the garden again. So let's get it potted up. And it really is as simple as putting some compost in the bottom, probably a couple of inches there, putting the canner into it. And the idea really is I want to cover the top of any visible rhizome growth there, but leave a shoot just poking through. So it'll go just below ground level. A lot of gardening, I think we tend to look for how-to guides and you know the exact way to do things, when in reality, a lot of it, it, it couldn't be any simpler. It's just have a go at it. With canners, you know that you can just pull them out of your hands, give it a go. If a rhizome's got a couple of growing points, you've got a good chance of it growing. And when it comes to potting it up, you don't have to get it millimetre perfect, especially at this stage, we're just looking to start them off. So something like that, which is probably the same conclusion you would have arrived at, is about perfect. The plant's just got a couple of new shoots there, pushing through the soil, and now this will go back in the polytunnel greenhouse. So I guess one question you might be asking is, can this go outside now? And the answer is really, I suppose, yes, it could. But as this has previously been kept under glass or plastic, this growth is more advanced than most of my canners in the ground. So that means it's vulnerable to any late frost that might come. So let me tell you about my care tips to protect this plant from frost over the next month and also get some magnificent summer growth out of it. So as that wind howls around me, I'll start talking about spring care tips for canners. And for me, really, there's three critical areas to think about to get the best plants possible. The first one is keeping this plant now it's potted up somewhere frost free. So personally, I'll be putting this back in my polytunnel. If you've got a greenhouse, that's fantastic. If you've just got a kitchen windowsill, maybe if you've got a few small plants and a very understanding other half, you can get away with that. But ideally, a polytunnel greenhouse that's kept frost free will be ideal. Preferably if you've got a heater, if we do get a late freeze, 
but if not, you can use a few layers of fleece over the top to hopefully protect this new growth. And that has two purposes. Firstly, cannas, although the part below the ground is very tough and hardy, and most varieties can survive in most UK gardens most winters. How's that for a political answer? These plants, once they start producing new growth, that new growth is tender. It's vulnerable to damage from late frosts and freezes, like a dahlia. So if you come from growing more conventional garden flowers, you're trying something more exotic this summer, treat these like a dahlia. Put them in a greenhouse or polytunnel, not only protects them from late frost, but also the extra heat as the spring sun or whatever spring sun we are gonna get over the next few weeks, is magnified under the glass or plastic. It really gets them off to a good start. And although these are tough and hardy plants, most of them come from very tropical origins. With cannas and these big leaf plants, the more heat they get, the faster they grow. So that's why polyton or greenhouse for the next month until late April, early May is really the best way forward. And then when it gets to early May to late May, depending on where you are in the country, you can bring them outside, hard them off somewhere sheltered and shady for a few days to a week or so, and then it's time to get them planted out. And by May, the ground will be warmer and they'll really be ready to grow. So the first crucial thing is keep them somewhere frost-free, bright and warm. The second tip is watering. Now, over winter, my big lumps of canna, I haven't really watered them much. Although in theory, you don't want them to dry out, you can just give them a sprinkle of water, maybe a couple of times over winter, Again, leaving them in big clumps or big pots really helps with this because they don't dry out completely too quickly. So now as we're heading into spring, the weather's getting warmer, you can start watering your canners. And I really use the water as the accelerator for growth. That's what gets these new leaves pushing through and really combines with the heat to get some magnificent growth out of these plants very quickly. But the third crucial step, as well as watering a couple of times a week, is feeding. And this is always a big one. Plants like cannas, bananas, gingers are very greedy, very thirsty plants. Whilst watering is minimal over winter and you don't need to feed them while they're not actively growing, now spring's here, you can see signs of growth above ground or you're potting new divisions up, you can certainly give them a good feed in. What do I recommend? Well, as always, I am a fan of liquid seaweed. I think it's a great growth stimulant and I mix it in with something with a little bit higher MPK. So yes, you could use some of the slow release fees I talked about in my video last month. They'll be great for it. But also liquid seaweed mixed with a tomato feed, even miracle Grow, something like that, which is very high in nutrients, can absolutely set these plants off to a good, strong start. Really, whatever feed you get, it should work well for canners. The nitrogen will get the big leaves and the other nutrients will really help get a strong plant with good flowers by the end of summer. So really, that's all there is to it. Today's video isn't massively complicated. To split canners up, basically, take some of the soil off the actual roots, see where that rhizome is, look for the strong healthy points, look for where it naturally wants to split and just rip it up with your hands. Enjoy it, go for it, have fun. Pot them up into a pot that's just a little bit bigger with some nice fresh compost, keep them well watered, put them somewhere frost free. And as you start to see this growth develop above the soil, give them the good strong feed. That's all you need to do until around May time when it's time to harden them off and introduce them to your garden yet again. So that is spring care for canners, nice and easy and exactly what I'll be doing here. And hopefully it won't be long now before we can enjoy some magnificent leaves, huge flowers and the vibrancy that these amazing exotic plants can bring. If you've got any questions about canners or other exotic plants, feel free to leave them in the section below. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.